Lawmakers have outsourced their jobs to the shadowy Koch Brothers-funded corporate think tank known as Alec. In case you don't know what Alec is, it's the American Legislative Exchange Council. The meeting's top donor, VP, followed by R.J. Reynolds Tobacco and Takeda Pharmaceutical Company. Alex membership includes both state lawmakers and corporate executives. Uh, critics say the Washington-based group has played a key role in helping corporations secretly draft model pro-business legislation that's been used by state lawmakers across the country. You know, the United States has 4% of the world's population, but yet we have 25% of the world's prisoners in this country. And a big part of the reason for that is Alec. Alec is the most active private prison lobbyist group pushing for anti-immigrant laws like Arizona's SB 1070. These private companies simply buy the politicians. I've been coming to these meetings for a long time. They are the most aggressive promoters in the country of clearing away barriers for corporations and wealthy people to spend whatever they want to win elections. In six months, we have witnessed extraordinary change taking place square by square, town by town, country by country. People have risen up to demand their basic human rights. Remember the recent attacks on workers' rights in Wisconsin, Ohio, and other states? The racist, anti-immigrant SB 1070 and others like it being passed in Arizona and around the country? How about recent legislation to privatize more prisons, measures to eliminate capital gains tax, and voter ID laws? What if I told you that these and many other like-minded laws could be traced back to one sinister conglomeration of state and corporate power? The American Legislative Exchange Council, or ALEC, is the venue through which global corporations and state politicians rewrite state laws that govern your rights. These so-called model bills reach into almost every area of American life and often directly benefit no one but the huge corporations that drafted them. Lauren Regan, a lawyer with the Civil Liberties Defense Center in Eugene, gave an ALEC 101 training last Friday in preparation for the upcoming Day of Action. She explains why ALEC deserves to be your primary target, no matter what cause you stand for. These model bills were basically wish lists for corporations. The entity, the ALEC entity, they vote on these agendas behind closed doors in these secret national meetings, and they have task forces that are set up to propose these radical pieces of legislation that rewrite almost all of our rights in this country in almost every area of law. In the past 10 years, ALEC has spent more than $370 million on state elections. ALEC introduces more than 800 bills around the country every year, about 180 of which are enacted. Oregon legislators receive the third highest amount of money from ALEC, behind California and Arizona, amounting to more than $16 million in the last decade. In 2010, Governor Kitzhaber received $26,000 from ALEC-aligned corporations. Again, here's Lauren Regan. Two other ALEC bills that have been introduced in our Oregon legislature, House Bill 3484 was called Council on Efficient Government. And literally, um, this law would have caused um, our state legislator to review whether goods or services provided by state agencies should be privatized. And that included prisons. Right now, it's still in committee. No votes have happened on it yet, but it's still in a live bill. One ALEC-backed bill that was narrowly defeated just last week would have made it a felony in Oregon to use social media to invite anyone else to commit a crime, such as attending an unpermitted march, protest, or sit-in. They were literally calling that the anti-Occupy bill. And that was an ALEC-sponsored bill. So ALEC is sitting around saying, what are we going to do about these Occupy bastards who are drawing attention to our good names? And so what are they going to do? They're going to try to take away the mass mode of communication that that movement is using successfully to mobilize. You know, make it a felony to use Twitter. I mean, it's, in, it's incredible, but, um, you know, it's why we really have to be vigilant at this point. All of us uh, have ALEC to thank for a lot of the work that we're doing. Um, you know, especially in the face of Citizen United, the idea that corporations can buy politicians, can buy laws, uh, can basically outspend us in attempting democracy in this country is pretty outrageous. 
Wednesday, February 29th, will be a National Day of Action, with nearly 50 cities participating across the country to shut down the corporations that are a part of ALEC, a few of which include Coca-Cola, ExxonMobil, AT&T, Kraft Foods, and Walmart. This is Jasmine Zimmerstecki, one of the organizers of F29. Well, the first thing we hope to do on February 29th is to expose the work that ALEC has been doing for the past 40 years behind the scenes of our American democracy. The second thing we hope to do on February 29th is to put pressure on the corporations who are actively participating in the American Legislative Exchange Council and pushing their agenda and telling them that their secret is out and we will no longer, we will no longer be complacent consumers of their businesses until they back down, back away, step away from Alec. To get involved with the February 29th Day of Action here in Portland, attend the upcoming training on February 25th from 11.30 to 5 at St. Francis Church in Southeast Portland, or visit shutdownthecorporations.org. I'm Isabel Charlet with KBOO News.